Oh, melt round on there. That is superb. Hi everyone, welcome to Backyard Chef Farm Rick. Today we are making Irish potato cakes. Many people know them as potato cakes, tatty scones, files, all sorts of things like that. Now I have got some old potatoes here which have started to eye up. I'm going to use these. There is absolutely no point in wasting good produce like this when it can be made into potato cakes and you can eat now and you can freeze for a later date. They're fantastic. Let's show you how to make them right now. Come on. So these potatoes are quite shocking actually, but not to worry. All we're going to do is skin them. Now you can use a potato peel if you want to take less off, but you can see the quality of these is not very good. So I'll use a knife and just come in there and we'll take that skin off. You know, I've seen people throw produce like this away. Why? Fantastic in a recipe like this. This reminds me of the times when I was in Skibbereen, Baltimore, all the way down there, you know. Union Hall. I had a great time in Ireland. I learned one or two things. Anyway, we're going to put the potatoes in the pan. I'm going to put some water in. Now I was going to peel all these potatoes first, but what I'll do is I'll just cut, cut a couple up. We're actually boiling for mash. So we just want some potato and we're going to bob it in our water. Simple as that. Now you can put salt in if you want. I'm not salting this because I'm going to salt the mash. And then all you do is you just carry on. And then it's just a case of on with the flame. Let's bring up those potatoes to boil. Now you can put a lid on if you want. Get the lid on there, help them along the way. We're going to bring them up to a boil. And when they're boiled and can take a fork, we're going to drain them and dry them back on the ring to make them fluffy. That is a simple procedure that you should do all the time with mashed potatoes, actually. It fluffs them all up. Okay, so when you've got your potatoes taking the fork in like that, they're done. Let's get that fl flame off and we're going to drain those and then we're going to put them back on the flame to dry out and fluff up. So we're going to get the flame back on. This is quite an important step when you make anything like this. You have to dry out the potatoes. So just give them a shake round. Listen to all that going on in the pan. It's going to stop eventually. There'll be no moisture in there. This also helps fluff up your potatoes, makes them nice and light. So just give them a turn over. Let's get those moist ones to the bottom. Now it doesn't matter if you break up the potatoes. You know, we're mashing them anyway. And when you can't hear any more sizzling, they're done. It's as easy as that. Okay, for mashing your potatoes then, you know, you can do it any way you want. You know, you can use a potato ricer if you so wish to rice up your potatoes. But for me, I know these potatoes are okay and they were going to mash them with a normal potato masher. I'm not worried about using the old potato ricer. Not for this. This is quite easy to do. Just in there, give them a little mash down. Nothing complicated. Also, what I will say is I'm not going to tell you what potatoes you should have used. That's up to you. Potatoes are potato. Some boil quicker than others, some roast up. I'll leave that choice for you. I don't have hang-ups about names of potatoes. They all mash. And we want to be going in there with a decent lump of butter. This is going to go all through the potato cakes. So just give it a little mix in. Now if you're using salted butter, 
you might not require salt. I think that's a bit like common sense. If you've got unsalted and you're using the potatoes, in with some salt to taste. That is up to you. Now don't forget that this is going to be mixed up with flour as well. So now we've got a lovely creamy buttery mash in this pan. I'm just going to tip all this flour in there and we're going to mix it in. As you can see I'm making a little bit more than that's in the recipe because I'm using those old potatoes and I'm actually going to freeze this. So just stir it all in. These potatoes are red hot at the moment and this is a job that you have to do when the potatoes are warm. If you try and do this job when the potatoes are cold, it doesn't come together. It's a lot of work. Nice and steady, in we go, until it's fully incorporated. It doesn't take long. So I want some flour on there. And then we want all our potato mix onto there to cool down. And then we can form a dough. So we're just going to a little bit of flour on there and let's just flatten that down a little bit to cool down. This thing is red hot. Okay so we get bring our dough together. It's cooled down a little bit but it's still sticky but that's how it wants to be. Now we want to cut this a little bit I think and put some to one side. And then we're going to come back in because we want to roll it to about the size of a, a telephone, about half an inch. Now you can roll it out flat or you can use your hands. We want some flour on there. We want some flour on there. And it is entirely up to you how flat you want your potato files. Now I think that's about right for me. I don't, I don't need a rolling pin or anything like that. Okay, now I've got some steel cutters here. It's quite large cutters and my pan is this size. So I'm going to make some files about that size. So all we're going to do is just cut through there. And that is going to be one of our files. So I'm just going to put that to one side. I'm just going to bring that together. You know, we don't have to stress about this. It's only a potato dough, but you do need to flatten it back in. So we'll have some flour on there and we'll give that a little shifty about. Now you could do the old fashioned way if you so wish. You could roll out the dough and you could cut it into triangles. So we know we've got a pan about that size, look. That will just squeeze in there, I reckon. So this is where you don't have to worry about anything with cooking. You add there as much flour as you need to form a dough. And then when you've got your dough formed, you make whatever shape you want. If you want a square, cut a square. Now what you can do, you can cut this already before putting it in the pan. Or you could cook it in the pan and then you can cut it. Now what we're going to do is we are coming straight through there. 
and let's do six bits for this. And then we'll chuck them in the pan when we come round to cooking. I'm just going to put everything, lay everything out all over the place actually until we're ready to chuck it in. Okay, just to cook off then, we've got all our stuff lying around. We've got all our potato files laying around. We want to go in there, a little bit of butter. Turn that flame down a little minute. We don't want it too hot because we want to be cooking these two or three minutes on each side. And then we're just going to go in there with our potato cakes. Our potato fowls. Don't stress about it. Nice and steady. Covered in flour, look. Nice and steady. Nice slow cook. Two or three minutes on each side. And then all we do is we flip them. Just flip them over. Let's have a little bit more on that side. And don't be worried about it. If you want to flip them again, flip them again. Up to you. Right, so we fried this in butter. You can dry fry too, but it doesn't have obviously that buttery flavor on there. But you can dry fry for a lighter crust. So I'm gonna flip them back a little bit and get a little bit more color on this side. There you go. The perfect potato cake. And once you've got them done to you, the doneness that you like, take them out. In with a bit more butter. In with another cake. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cook all of these because there's quite a many here. I'll cook all of these and then we'll get through to serving up and taste testing. Okay, so you just give it a little bit of a turning over. Oh, look at that. So you can make them as big as you want. You know, you could put the whole centerpiece on the table and just cut through. So again, we just want to be turning that over. Now, you can turn it as many times as you want. You know, I'm sure there's going to people say, just turn it once. Well, turn it once if you want, you know. But if you want it cooking nice and evenly all over, with a nice bit of colour and coming through there, turn it as many times as you want. You know, these potato cakes, potato files, they're quite thick. I haven't made thin ones. You know, you can make a potato file pizza. You've got a pizza base there. Just shove some tomato sauce and some cheese, stuff it under the grill. Mm, mouth's watering. So just flip it any which way you want. You flip it with the, with the old slice. Or just do the old pancake trick, it doesn't matter. Just flick it over. There we go, that is another one done. That's straightforward. In with some more butter. In fact, it's a bit like making pancakes, really. Right, in with that butter. I'll carry on cooking down. Catch you when we've done them all. So there we are, we've got a whole pile made there. These are still a little bit warm. These are all going to go in the freezer. These probably are too. This I'm going to have now for breakfast. Get your butter on there. It's melting in. Oh, melt round on there. 
That is superb. So all we got to do <laughs> is get our egg on there. Look at that. On there with a bit of pepper. And let's give it a taste test, see what it's like. Here we go. Oh, lovely potato file in there. Oh, in there with our fried egg and a bit of butter. Get that butter on there. That is, oh, that is absolutely tremendous. Little bit of butter, little bit of egg. Well, that's potato fowls made. If you like what we're doing. Mm -mm. Now, if you like what we're doing, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe, share with your friends, all that kind of stuff. Catch you in the next video.